All right, guys, good morning. It's, uh, I don't know, I think, what's today's date? The first, is it April Fool's Day? April Fool's, yeah, but we're still not playing baseball, so I don't know. This, is, this isn't a joke anymore, I guess. I think that's the joke, really, but I think, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously it's for the best, and um, we're uh, here this morning going to talk about a little bit of, uh, a little bit of baseball mechanics. Uh, this is, all right, so I'm, I'm Pat Healy. I'm uh, the owner of uh, Healy Chiropractic in the Maine Athletic Health Center. And uh, we're putting together uh, just some collaborations with some professionals, specifically coaches, because we are, um, we're, we're biomechanics. We do a lot of movement pattern stuff and we um, try to uh, combine that with the technique that, you know, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in technique, um, but somebody like my friend Justin here is. And so we are just kind of talking about some things that kids can be doing um, while they're out of sports and not, not really um, working with their full team to maybe develop some of those skills and uh, improve their warm up patterns, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So my name's Justin Courtney. And uh, for me, I'm the owner of Punch Out Pitching and uh, was a former Division One baseball player at the University of Maine where uh, I met Pat and and uh, during my 2018 season, I had Tommy John surgery and uh, had to work on basically my rebuilding my entire arm. Uh, and so from all that, we got it done. I got back into games and, and today uh, I'm a free agent trying to be a professional baseball player this next season, whenever that season starts. And so uh, I started punch out pitching really to to try to give back to some some local kids and and basically try to impact any player who really doesn't have that personal skills coach uh, so that they can get better and work on mechanics because that's really what I dug into a lot uh, during my my Tommy John surgery uh, to get back to 95 miles per hour so I try to dig in as hard as I can as far as different mobility aspects and what I kind of look for in some videos so I hope that our, our little series here with the Maine Athletic Health Center, I think that's going to be uh, giving you some value and, and trying to just basically see there's small little things that anybody can do basically anywhere. So even in this time of quarantine and uh, sports not being played, there's still some stuff you can do. So, yeah, and away. we're we're closed right now. Obviously, we're, uh, you know, doing what we can to try, try to flatten the curve, as they say. I saw a great um picture this morning of uh, Fred Lynn uh, from the former Red Sox player posted his version of flattening the curve and it was I think him hitting a line drive of some sort so uh, I mean we, we all have to take some humor in this but um, I think our brand of, of what we're trying to do in this time of quarantine and uh, social isolation is provide some information for you that might be useful at home and might give you some um, maybe tips that can make you better when the season does start. I agree. And I think number one, the, the easiest thing that people can do is, is warm up to throw. Don't throw to warm up. I, I saw that even for myself in my high school days, really like I just basically got out there, did a couple of arm circles. Uh, well, we'll see how this goes today. And, and there's really way more benefit that you can get from just warming up. You don't even have to waste any of your throws just flipping it to your partner back and forth and uh, there's a whole bunch of exercises that you can do to warm up and and there's a whole bunch of reasoning behind it from a from a posture perspective from a even from a sports performance perspective in baseball and coaching like if basically if you're not sweating before you even start to throw then you're wasting throws and everybody knows you only have so many bullets you, you don't get unlimited and sometimes your elbow has to get put back together and everything that I would like to do uh, in throwing programs and arm care exercises is to try to prevent that. So yeah, uh, there's so that, much. Oh, well, I, I'm a big believer in posture. I mean, we teach a lot of that to older adults who have already let it go too far. And now they're dealing with, you know, numbness and tingling in their hands or something like that. That is not something that you can necessarily deal with proactively, but you can still, you can still stretch at that point and affect it. But doing the proper stretches when you're young and learning how to balance your muscle groups out so that they're not putting so much stress on each other is really, really important for a younger kid or even a high school or college kid learning to throw and learning to do it correctly. Yeah. And I think a lot of it, I mean, even from a, a coach's perspective, it seems like every coach at every level is saying, Oh, if you just can tweak this and maybe throw your curveball a little bit differently. So we're constantly asking 
athletes to change and change this, change this, you'll be better from doing this. But I think there does need to be some consistency. And I think a routine, a pre-throwing routine, um, we've talked about before, prehab instead of rehab. You know, if you can just find a few things that make your arm feel good every day, uh, something with my own players, I, I completely stress being healthy, being mobile, being strong. That there's really, if you can be an athlete and you're healthy, it's it, you do no good to your team if you can only go out there once every 10 days and let it rip. You know, there's there's something to be said for recovery. And uh, so it, it, I think it's, it's, uh, it's often overlooked. I know it's pe people only have limited amounts of time sometimes to be in a high school gym. All right, warm up five minutes. Let's go. We only got an hour and a half. Rah, rah, rah. So the more that the player can do to take control, I think it, it helps a lot. Yeah. And I think uh, one thing that happens in sports a lot is they, they try to put a uh, big picture item and apply it to a lot of different people when you could say, okay, this kid specifically needs to do these things. And, you know, one of the things that we're going to try to do over the next couple of weeks is teach, teach you what to look for and maybe what your body profile um, lends to, you know, maybe some things that you could be doing differently or specifically to you to prevent those injuries from happening. Um, I, I think it's, it, it's just so important to realize that, you know, you're not going to get to throw every day, but just because you can't throw every day doesn't mean you can't do some stretching and some warm up to just kind of get that tissue softened up and prepare your body for when you do get to throw. Yeah. And I have, I have a few exercises really, if you have a, any resistance band, I mean, there are so many that you can get, um, you know, just off the internet or, or even for, like, you know, you probably have a band or something laying around the house. I've got one. I might have one right here. Yeah. Yeah. And even, I mean, there's a specific brand that's pretty popular in, in baseball right now, but even that red one right there, like a TheraBand or whatever it is, um, you know, a few, everybody's sort of seen the shoulder internal external rotation at 90 degrees. And I really like that one the best as far as to prepare me for throwing and, uh, you know, rotation, uh, forward reverse flies with that upward rotation. Uh, you could even do supination, pronation, bicep, tricep. So if I was, let's, um, so if I was going to tie something down here, uh, and I want to do at 90 degrees, so I'm, I want to keep my shoulder right at 90 degrees, correct? Yep. Okay. And I don't need to have a ton of tension on that, just enough to get the resistance, correct? Exactly. And you want to make sure that elbow basically is staying right at 90 degrees and you're not dropping it to pull it back or you're not like really shrug, shrugging your shoulder to pull it back. So as, as much as that 90 degrees, I sometimes like to teach, you know, like a field goal, you've got both sides and you just take one side down and you're going like that. Yeah. So I think, I mean, it's, you feel it start to burn after just a few repetitions, just getting those muscles firing and, I think that's an important lesson too, is uh, muscle activation. You know, what you're doing when you're warming up is teaching the muscles how to be pliable and how to move the way you want them to. So you're teaching that muscle to do the most simple variation of what it's supposed to do so that when you put it into a complex movement pattern, like throwing it, it's working effectively and those the, um, muscle fibers are all working together for Absolutely. And I like doing that, especially at 90 degrees, because you kind of uh, add that scapular control into it that I learned that word. So I got it beat into my head during rehab with all these P PTs and everything that I was working with. And even like upward rotation stuff, if you can just take a, a forward fly and raise your arm up. And even if it's a, a you know, it's just a simple exercise. If you just add that element of rotating your rotating up above. So if you got one right there, just imagine that you had two in your hands and you go to the side and then straight up and back down. Then that just a whole nother way to so, yep. uh, show me again. So you go straight across or pull it across and then try to go straight up and then back down to the side and back in. Good. Yeah. So what do you think for reps, Justin? What are you, what are we going to recommend? As part of a warm up, if they're doing the you know internal external rotation at ninety and the what do you call that? What do you call that? 
I call that either a forward or a reverse fly with upward rotation. So the both of them I'd probably try to do for 12 reps each. Um, and if you wanted to, could go through the whole series twice uh, before you throw, do it one for 12, and then after, do it again, another set of 12. Um, there's kind of a full, I mean, you, you can even imagine how many exercises you can do with uh, yeah. that band right yeah. there. But I mean, next time, we'll, we'll go over a full warm-up for them. How's that? Sounds good to me, but I think there's, you know, you kind of hit the big ones right there, and um, we'll see if it's, it's warming your arm up to throw here in a little bit. And honestly, if you don't, if you don't have a band, I, I believe very simply in just pinching your shoulder blades back. You can hold it like that, and, you know, you can move through that full range of motion like that, just contracting your shoulder blades, and that activates those muscles to stabilize your shoulder blades. A, a wall angel type exercise where you're going up and over like that actually really helps to activate those muscles. And then, um, yeah, the, you, can also, you can do the internal external rotation not at 90 as another variant. Um, I think it's more baseball and softball specific if you are at 90. I, I agree, and uh, even if you're like the wall angels that are like pushing pushing up against the wall, just like you did, you can you can even like stand like that up against the wall and push into the wall like that position. At that position, you can go up above and push into the wall. Yeah, and no excuses really. I mean, you don't even need a wall. You can just activate your muscles by pinching back like that in the middle of the room. So. Absolutely. Um, so. Uh, you saw Justin the other day. I posted a video where I was throwing, and people were guessing how fast I was throwing. I yeah, people people were giving you some big time credit right wow. off the bat. All right, so some some tips that you gave me. What where we where we start? So I was here. Uh, let me get in the shot, okay? And then I you bring you, you okay? Start in your stance. Come up here. You're you said stand tall here, right? Yeah. So that posture that that you're in, uh, a lot of times players will they'll be in their motion and then sometimes they'll get really small or they'll start to lean back or there's a whole bunch of different things that you kind of get inefficiencies when you're trying to throw and you're leaning off of it so uh wherever your posture is at your your balance point stay in it the whole time and step straight to your target okay. uh, I think that helps a lot and if you were on a side view you'd be able to see that arm come up and be inside of 90 degrees. So right, right about here, right? Yeah. And so your front arm is basically your, your sight to the plate, and that elbow is what's driving you. You, know, you can direct everything from there. And then this arm is going to stay inside of 90 degrees. It can, it can be at 90, but a little bit inside. You just don't want it to be out really long because then it'll have to – you kind of have to use your shoulder and your elbow real hard to whip it around. So we just talked about keeping your arm inside of 90 when your foot lands. That way it's easier to just whip it around. Yeah, and, and the big reason for that is actually because it takes torque off of your shoulder and your elbow when you're in that position. You don't want to be out here extended because it's just like a long lever. If you're lifting up a weight out here, there's a lot more stress on these joints to do that. Whereas if you keep it in close to your body, you take the stress off those joints. So, uh, Justin, you're, I mean, you speak firsthand to this. So you suffered from a uh, UCL injury in college, right? Yeah. So it kind of came out of nowhere for me. I was kind of told I had good mechanics or uh, was just really getting good results so that I didn't really have to change all that much. And then uh, I almost came back the next year, less than a year later, throwing harder than I was before. So there's definitely some adjustments that I made, but like an easy look on some video is when your front foot lands, where is your arm? Is it down, up? You, or is your elbow inside, outside 90? Or you can kind of just look and see, all right, you can draw that, that angle. All right, I'm good there. All right. Well, let's see if your tips paid off and uh, we got a radar gun. We're going to see if I can get over 60, right? Let's do it, yet. Yeah. All right, so I've, I've already warmed up pretty well. I'm gonna just kind of loosen up. This is, you know, how long should it, how long should a kid spend warming up before they start throwing? I I like to think 15 to 20 minutes if you really want to get hot. Uh, I think that a lot of times people are only given five to ten. So if you can just get there early and make your own time, right? I, that's what I'm gonna say exactly. Is get in there early, get your own time. It's only five to ten minutes extra but your body will definitely thank you for it because 
you need it to throw and throw consistently, especially if it's you're in a cold weather climate. Like me, your body's going to be hurting at 38 degrees if you're going to try and rip a ball as hard as you can. Yes, yeah, snow on April 1st, right? Yeah. Oh boy. All right. So we're going to do our best here. So I'm going to get in the full shot right here. Stand up tall. Up here, I'm gonna open up to within 90, and then I'm gonna follow through down like that. So we'll, yep. see if this, we'll see if this pays off here. And I am not a pitcher, so uh, this, this is not a natural motion for me, but as you work on it, Justin, you know, your, your flexibility should improve, right? And Absolutely. And, and like you said, too, like a lot of people will struggle at first that position where you're in that launch or that power position and then getting your shoulder to kind of like roll you through that position. And that it's just really simply that external rotation of your shoulder. If you can get it to open up and that's how you'll be able to whip through that motion and not get stuck because when we were talking earlier, some guys feel like they get stuck when they are at this top and then they try to throw. All right. So it just, and most of the time I'll just try to say, make it smooth and make it fast. All right. Well, let's see if I can do that. Sixty-one. Yes. Sixty-one. There it is. So I like it. All right. So in with just that, I gained one a mile per hour, which you know um, I'm going to come back over here and close up on the computer. Um, you know, it's it's not uh, you know coaching and biomechanics they go together, and um, I mean I think posturally I'm big on posture, hip strength, balance. And baseball is a very one-sided sport. So the stuff I'm going to teach and, and show you is all how to develop that coordination that isn't necessarily directly related to baseball, but it contributes to how you get better. And then the stuff, you know, Justin here has the know-how on the technique and combining those two ideals um, can go a long, long way. Totally. And I think a lot of it too is to try to find what works for that person. And I think sometimes the skill coaches are limited because you, you don't have those biomechanical markers to see exactly what's going on. Yeah. So uh, anytime you can, you can take video and, and assess from a biomechanics perspective, like what Pat has it is so crucial to give over to the sports coach and say, here's what I saw. And then you can almost, it, kind of tips you off to those things that the athlete needs. And then you can get them. Okay. I like how you do this with your arm, but if we could try this and adjust this to that. And so you can, you can almost uh, use the, the go hand in hand with the assessment piece. And then you can kind of tailor that personalized instruction uh, based off of that. So, yeah, I mean, we, so we got about a minute and a half to go. Um, and I mean, I think my takeaways from this are, you know, make sure you're warming up. Take the time that's needed to do that because that's not just a tomorrow thing. That's a 30 years from now thing. And it matters. It really does. Uh, Justin, what's, what's your takeaway from today? Mine, mine is uh, warm up to throw. Don't throw to warm up. If that's, there's anything you can take away, you don't want to waste throws yep. playing catch. So make sure your body is ready. Uh, and if you're going to watch video, Watch and see at front foot strike where that arm is, and see uh, see if it's inside ninety degrees or not. So yeah, if somebody wants to send us a video too. I mean, we're not going to break down a hundred videos on this, but if somebody, you know, whoever the first one to send something in is, maybe we'll look at it and go over it on on uh, conversation next week. But um, sure. I'll comment on uh, the post once it gets put up, and I'll I'll put a still picture of you know what we're looking for and stuff like that. So will it we'll, be you? I could make it me. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think it should be you. I can do that. All yeah. right. Um, well, hey, Justin, it was great talking to you. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, let's do, let's do this again soon. I like it, Pat. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon.